One of the more interesting advancements in DX technology over the past few years has been the use of RDS auto logging by FMDXers. And we talk about this a lot in our live stream, but for those who are unfamiliar, you basically have your SDR, it's plugged into your computer, you have your SDR software, and you scan through the FM band looking for RDS codes. And whenever it receives one, it then decodes that, compares that to a listing in a database, and when it finds a match, it then uploads that information to a map so you can visually see all of the stations that were received in your area via RDS decode. Um, it's an amazing bit of technology, but it does require you to get really any benefit from it to devote one of your SDRs solely to RDS auto logging. You have to have a computer to plug that into and so forth. So there's, there's some extra stuff you have to do. It turns out that in the last year or so, more and more FMDXers have been adopting the use of these TEF6686 radios, such as this desktop model here. I also have a portable version here. And we've actually figured out a way now to be able to allow DXers to use these TEF radios without a computer and let it scan the FM band and decode RDS signals and then upload those decodes to the same map. And it turns out this is actually a very, very sensitive and fast RDS decoder compared to just about every other SDR that's out there. All right, before we do any of the computer part, I, I at least want to kind of give you a little quick primer on the TEF6686 radios that we're talking about here, because there's starting to be more and more of these radios out there on Amazon, AliExpress, and places like that, but not all of them will actually do what we're talking about here. For instance, this is one of the more popular AM and FM portables these days. It's a uh, Quotzen, Quotosen, um DX286, great little radio, uses the TEF6686 chip inside. Super sensitive, great radio, love this little guy. Um, it's not going to let us do the things we're talking about here because A, it doesn't have Wi-Fi capability. It needs to have Wi-Fi connectivity. It also doesn't run on the right software. This is the uh, desktop model uh, of the TEF6686 radios that you can find on like AliExpress. This just came in today. Um, and when I turn it on here, you'll see this logo here. And then you'll see the screen will show here, right? You have your frequency up here and it kind of looks like that. Comparing that to what we see on the 286, it's a completely different uh, uh, screen that we're looking at. So this is the actual version. This is what we're looking for. We're looking for the screen that kind of looks like this. Um, this is the radio we're actually gonna be walking you through. You can do the same thing on this portable version. There's a couple of different models of portable versions out there. You can do it on this one. It can be a little more tricky because some of the models you have to have like a button that you have to push for flash mode. Sometimes that's easily accessible through like this little hole right here. Mine was not. I had to actually take the case off and kind of dig in there and get in and kind of find the button and do some this stuff. This one is super easy. You basically, you have a USB port here in the back. You plug a USB cable in that comes with the radio. Um, and then you plug that into your computer and then, bam, there you go. You're good to go. Um, you can easily update this uh, uh, firmware for this. And then once you've got the firmware updated, it's a super simple process to go from there to get it auto-logging to get. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and get this one uh, plugged into our computer. And then we'll meet back here on the computer uh, interface and we'll show you how to get the uh, flat firmware updated and then what you need to do from there. All right, so let's walk you through the steps here on how to update your TEF6686 radio with the most recent firmware. Again, we're working off of the desktop version because it's the easiest path to do that. You just plug it into your computer through the USB cable that's provided from the radio, and then you're good to go. Um, the link that you'll need in uh, is in the video description for the Discord server here. This is the fmdx.org open radio project. Uh, Discord server, and over here on the sidebar of the different channels and everything like that, you have at the very bottom, you have an area that says updates. That's where you want to go to get the most recent firmware version, which as of making this video is um, 2.11.8. Now, you will want to keep an eye on this to get the most recent versions of firmware because they do post pretty regular updates for bug fixes and new enhancement uh, features and things like that. So I definitely recommend that you bookmark uh, this page for the uh, updates channel on the Discord server. Um, that way you can go back and get the most recent version later on down the road. Just click on this link here to download your zip file. And you'll get a warning, and that's fine. And then once that's downloaded, we're going to open up the file. And I'm going to extract this into my own folder, wherever you want to put it. I'm just going to put mine on my documents. We're going to call this TEF 
6686. DEF 6686 version 2.11.8. So I can keep track of my, my versions here. Just in case I ever need to go roll back or anything. All right, so once you have your files extracted into a folder, you want to make sure that your radio is connected to a USB port on your computer and that it's turned on. Okay, make sure those two steps are done. Then double click where it says flash in your list of files. Now, the first thing it's going to ask you is what COM port your device is on. Uh, it'll give you a list of available COM ports to choose from. Right now, the only option I have is three. I can confirm that though by going to Device Manager in Windows and then going to my ports. You'll see here USB serial CH340. That's the TEF radio. So you want to look for what if you have multiple COM ports here, whichever one says CH340, that is your uh, that is your device. So I'm just going to enter three. Does your radio have a boot button to flash the radio? I'm using the desktop. It does not. I think most of the portables do. You just want to consult documentation for your specific model. In my case, since I'm using the desktop, the answer is no. All right, it's going to be start formatting everything, and then it's going to start writing all the files. And this process takes just a few moments. It's not very lengthy. Um, it'll go through. It'll flash all of the firmware that's on the radio itself. If you're updating your firmware from a previous version that was already updated, um, this process usually takes very, very uh, little time at all. If it's the first time you're updating the firmware, it might take just about a minute or two. It shouldn't take too, too long. Eventually, you'll get a message here that says update completed. Press any key to close the program. So you do, and now you are set. Your radio is good to go. I recommend turning off your radio on the back uh, panel of the radio. Turn it off and then wait about three or four seconds and then turn it back on. It'll reboot and you are ready to begin step two of our process. All right, once the firmware on your TEF radio is updated, you're ready to begin the next step here where we actually configure the radio, which I have here now in my hand. There it is. We're gonna configure this radio and we're gonna go through the internal Wi-Fi network that's on this computer. And we're gonna use our smartphone to connect up to that and get everything all set. First thing you'll need to do to get this process started is send an email to our friend Les Rayburn at n1lf.sec at gmail.com. He will actually set you up with a rabbitears.info account. He'll send you the username and password for that account that should be plugging in here in a few moments into your TEF radio. And he'll also send you the instructions that you see here on screen. Um, so the first thing we have to do is press down on the um, mode button until the menu displays here. So I'm gonna just press down on my mode button that's on this desktop model. That's the middle button. So we're gonna press and hold. Now we get the menu. Uh, and then we're gonna go to connectivity. We're using our top sc um, scroll here uh, to do that. We get down to connectivity and then you push on that top knob and that brings you to the next menu, we're gonna choose configure Wi-Fi. Go down to that, hit that. Now on our smartphone, we're going to connect to the proper Wi-Fi network. In this case is an ESP. Once we have done that, we've, we've gotten our device connected to the network. It brings up, on my phone, it brings up a screen. Connect this device to a Wi-Fi network. I'm going to just have it do an auto scan here to find a Wi-Fi network for me to connect it to. All right, so I'm doing an auto scan here of my Wi-Fi options. I'm just going to choose my uh, one of my two gigahertz ones here, my main one. And then I enter my password for my network. The XDR GTK password is provided to you in the instructions. Then use the username, the account number basically, that Les sent to you. And the password that he gave you as well. And then hit saved. Credentials have been saved. Attempting to connect to the network. Please wait. That's what it says now. So it is actually in process right now of attempting to connect to my Wi-Fi network using uh, the information that I gave on the screen. It just flashed up and said connected and then refreshed the uh, screen. Okay. 
Once you have all your configuration completed by via Wi-Fi, the next thing you're going to want to do is actually configure the radio and make some changes here. So uh, we're going to long press this mode button right here. It's the on the desktop model. It's this middle button. You're going to press that and long hold it, and you're going to see some options. We're going to use this top knob here to scroll down to RDS settings. So I'm just going to kind of hard to do with one hand here. And then to, to select that option, you just click on the knob. Uh, the first thing you want to do is make sure you change this region. It's going to default to Europe. You'll want to select America here. And then I hit the mode button again, and that'll bring me back to my main settings. Then I'm going to go to FM settings. And again, click on that. Um, scroll down here until you'll see FM default step size right here. And this will default to 100. You want to set that at 200. And then hit the mode button again. And then go to FM settings. We have a couple in here we want to change. Okay. Uh, for I'm sorry, FM DX settings. FM DX options. There's a couple in here we're going to change. Uh, number one, we're going to change our wait time. Now, it mentions in the instructions to set this to 15 seconds. You can do that. It defaults to 5. I'm going to set it right in the middle at 10. That's where I usually like to have mine. Um, memory channels is the next thing. This is going to come in. It's going to say only. You want it to uh, change that to exclude. Okay. Um, the next thing is scan sensitivity. This defaults on mine. It was defaulted to four. I just changed it to one. And then wait time on signal only. You want to make sure that is set to off. It defaults to on. You just want to change that to off. And then there you go. And then once you've done that, hit your mode button, hit it again. That's going to save and store. If you want to double check and make sure, you can hold down that button for uh, another cycle, kind of hold it down long, go to your FMDX options and make sure that all your settings look good. These do. So I just back out, hit the mode button twice. Now turn your receiver off and then back on. All right. Once that's up and running, you'll just hit the mode button until it gets to MIM. There's MIM right there, right? MIM. Now hit the STA, stay button. And now, after you remind, because I chose 10 seconds. There you go. You long hold on your mode button here, and then you scroll down to FM settings, and then tap that. You have an option here to set your band. High, low. I'm going to, it's not mentioned in the instructions, but I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to set mine to 88.1 and low, 107.9. High. Now we're set. And then all I'd have to do is make sure that I'm on the MIM, hit the stay button, STA, right here. And now I'm set. All yeah, right. Well. So now we've got everything configured. We go to our map here, our location that was provided by, to us by, by Les with our ID up here at the top. We go to our map and we see that stations are starting to populate again. Now, don't forget what it basically does is it scans the entire band. It gets to the top 107.9. It stops, sends all the decodes up, and then it recycles back around. So this, let me show you, is the map for our other TEF6686 that we have running. This is running through a 21-foot um, uh, dipole right now. So this is all the decodes in the last 24 hours on that radio. This is what we've received already so far, uh, just the top end of the band um, that was uploaded here since we configured this uh, TEF to work with the auto logger. So this is going to now fill in even more and eventually we'll have a nice full map like we probably do on uh, this other TEF6686. Map. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you. And if so, we would love it if you gave us a thumbs up, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified when new videos are available. From all of us here at DX Central, my friends, take care. Best of DX73. Now let's go back. 
and hit the band. <laughs>